Hello everybody, Andy here again. I read an article in the newspaper yesterday about outsiders and mavericks and this was to do with the, uh, the music industry in particular. It was written by Johnny Marr who used to be the uh, guitarist in a band called The Smiths, very uh, important and very popular British band. And I sort of read that and I thought, oh, that really sort of chimes with a couple of things that I've videos that I've done recently. One was about um, where have all the rebels gone, which was a, f a few months ago. And, and one recently was, it, is it just me with all the sort of the globalisation, the sort of homogenisation of things that are going on now and how everything seems the same. But amazingly enough today, I've had two examples, one, once on the radio first thing this morning and talking about uh, another sort of music person, talking about this sort of outsider thing. Then I read something in the newspaper earlier on today, talking about a book that's coming out, which sort of deals with the same sort of thing. So whether this is something that's sort of creeping up and something that needs to be done, maybe it's because of that sort of homogenisation thing that I was talking about before. Cut to the chase of what I'm talking about before I completely baffle you all over the place. <laughs> um, People from the outside look at things from different ways. What Johnny Marr was talking about, when talking about the, the music side of things, is that most of the big influential bands, people that have come along, have had someone there, usually the manager, but quite often the people within the band as well, who've come from the outside. They've not come from within the music industry itself. In some ways, they needed to come from outside. People like the Beatles, yes, they, they had Brian Epstein, who was an outsider. The Rolling Stones had a manager who was an outsider. People like that did it. Um, you, you can think of numerous examples that people that came from a different side, they wouldn't, weren't from the music industry itself. And sometimes you need people who are from the outside to take a completely different view of something. You can probably think of that in your life. I can think of the examples actually in work or in things that I've got involved with and you're talking to people who, who deal with a specific product or service or something like that and they're talking about something and then you just happen to sort of throw something in and they go, whoa, whoa we never thought about that. Because you're looking at it from somewhere else, you can't see the wood for the trees type of expression. And I think this is something that obviously other people are picking up on as well. This is what we need nowadays. I mean, the maverick expression, as we said, is something that came out a lot in the US presidential election. They were branding John McCain as a maverick. Now there's a reason for that, because a maverick is, is usually thought of as someone who could be a bit, a bit dodgy, a bit unstable, you're never quite sure what they're going to do. The last thing you probably want is someone who's possibly the most important part person in the world, and the most influential person, powerful person in the world. But probably the reason they did it is because they thought that something needed to change. Have we heard that word before? Well, something needed to change, they needed someone who was different, someone who might look at things from, the, from a different way, someone who was possibly an outsider. <laughs> so this is, this is coming across lots of different ways and I also think that this, this works here as well. Something that this is doing, that YouTube's doing, because one of the things that, that Johnny Marr was saying about the music industry, you look at it now, the way that the internet has opened up the world really to all those outsiders, you and me, who are outside of something. We can't get involved in making media things, we can't get involved in making music in the sort of traditional way of doing things. It doesn't matter how good you are in something, the people don't come to you, you have to go to them and usually you have to do it through certain channels. In the music industry it's usually by getting involved with one of the big record companies and trying to get an A&R man or someone like that to come out and see you. But now you don't have to do that. A lot of these people in the past didn't do that. They started out their own labels, their managers looked at it in a different way and they started things on small labels or whatever. If, if, the, if it's good enough, if it's different, it will succeed. As we look at something like the, the punk movement from the sort of mid 70s, although when the Sex Pistols came along they weren't hugely original music wise, but they were different in lots of other ways. They did it as a do it yourself sort of culture. Yes, I know they signed to a major record label in the end, but all the other bands that came in their wake came because of that sort of, you know, they just get three chords together, go and form a band, they watched something that was different, they got inspired because this was something from an outsider, someone who was a bit like them. They were all outsiders and it's good to feel involved sometimes and they sort of followed on and that whole thing exploded. It, it took over everything, not just music, it took over art, the media generally, we're still feeling those sort of ripples that, that came across from that sort of punk era. I know a lot of it's been sort of bought in into the sort of homogenised world, but so those, those influences are still there. Those things are still happening, and the internet is another great example, as I said, 
it's enabling all of us, whether it be musicians, video makers or whatever, to put our points of view out there. And some of them will get found and some of them will sort of make their little niche. But the reason we do this is not because we're sort of searching for fame or we're searching for fortune. It's great if you get, you know, if someone wants to give me some money or something. But you're doing because you want to do it. And that's one of the big things, whether it be music, you have to do it because your heart's in it. If, you, if your heart's not in it, it will start to show. And if you start pandering to the sort of commercial aspects of these things, it will start to show. And that, that happens on YouTube as well. So YouTube, as I always say, is a big... It's sort of a microcosm of what life is like. You can sort of use, use everything that you see in the outside world and turn it around to the YouTube argument, and I, I'm quite often doing that. And this is another example of that, I think. We've seen that here. With this, I'm not criticising the partnership programme and that type of thing, but you can see that people, and without you realising it, they, they start to start thinking about views. We do it here. If you get the more subscribers you get, the more you start to think, well, should I be doing this type of video? Should I be doing that type of video? Be true to yourself. Um, do what you want to do, because we need the mavericks, we need the outsiders, they're the people who do things differently, who open up new avenues for all of us, and the internet has done that. Maybe Tim Berners-Lee was a bit of a maverick, I don't know, it certainly was in the fact that he didn't do it for the money. <laughs> so that's something that's come through from that. So do it yourself, do it your way, you know, to quote Frank Sinatra, you know, did it my way, and that's what we need to do here. We need to be true to ourselves, true to our convictions, true to our consciences, and that will make it a lot better. And I think people will respect you a lot more for that. I will certainly respect people more for that, whether it be on YouTube, whether it be in the art world, music, film, media generally, I don't care. If you do what you're being true to yourself, true to your convictions and true to your beliefs, etc., then I think you'll get a lot more, lot more respect than you would if you're just doing it purely for the money. And we can see that only too much in the music industry, the way that things are going now, can't we? Anyway, that's enough of that. So be a maverick, be an outsider, but be true to yourself. An expression I always like to use, be original, be yourself. And, uh, and you can say that you did it your way. Thanks, Tom. I'll speak to you again soon. Goodbye.